Hello, uh, welcome to the discussions related to the polymer processing and uh, recycling techniques in this course on polymers. Uh, in this lecture, the focus will remain on the applications uh, and we will review uh, two specific uh, polymer processing operations, uh, namely extrusion and injection molding. Both of these are extremely common uh, processing operations uh, which are used in polymer processing. Uh, the uh, extruders can be uh, single and uh, twin screw. Uh, we will uh, discuss uh, twin screw extruder later on, which is also a very efficient mixing device. In uh, this slide, what I have shown is a single screw extruder. Uh, the idea of uh, extruder is to start with a pellets on one hand, and uh, these are usually cylindrical pellets, uh, few mm uh, diameter, few mm. Uh, uh, length and uh, the they are fed uh, through a hopper uh, onto a screw and then uh, of course uh, we can add uh, other things also so there will be uh, other ports for adding additives in this and uh, additives of course uh, are for uh, stabilization or or any other uh, feature that is desired and uh, if we let us say are making a blend, then we will have to have pellets of both of the polymers. If we are making a, just one polymer uh, homopolymer, then we just have a one single pellet. But in both the cases, we will have mixing and melting involved because there are additives and a single polymer or two polymers being mixed. And, uh, once uh, melting and mixing has happened, then uh, the overall uh, polymeric system is now ready for shaping. And uh, the shaping operation then is done using the die. And finally, what comes out is called the extrudate. So, the process involves, uh, so if you look at uh, initially, there will be only pellets and that is why it is called a solids conveying zone. In this case, what happens is the screw uh, which is there uh, is uh, rotating because it is connected to a motor. And so, the screw rotation is a very important uh, variable at our disposal in order to optimize this processing operation because faster is the screw rotation that implies that faster is the delivery of pellets and the compaction that is involved because we are pushing the pellets against each other. At the same time, we also will have heating that is going on because melting is involved. So, given that melting is involved, uh, some amount of heating is done. However, given that this material is getting compacted, given that one layer of fluid is rubbing past the other la layer of fluid or frictional forces or viscous forces are involved in all of these polymer processing operations we have significant amount of viscous dissipation. So, some amount of heat is being generated due to the action of flow that we are forcing the polymer to undergo. And so, as uh, material comes uh, proceeds further, we have this transition zone where temperature has increased so that the pellets start melting. And if you look at, uh, you, you in, in the, let us say we look at this uh, from the uh, uh, side where uh, the between uh, basically screw. So, this screw is rotating and therefore, what we will have is the pellets of the polymer. So, initial stages these pellets will just continue to rotate because the screw is also rotating. But beyond a certain uh, time, once it comes to, so this will be in the solids conveying zone. When we come to the transition zone, then what we will have is uh, part of the pellets may still be there and uh, the other part of the screw may already have a melt. And even surrounding each and every pellet, if you look at little more carefully, you may have a pellet, uh, part of it may also be molten. So, therefore, uh, a solid pellet and a molten pellet. This is at a single pellet level 
or we could have melt zone and pellets. So, in uh, extruder by definition we have this multi-phase flow where there are solid pellets and molten uh, polymeric melts moving simultaneously. And uh, if let us say the mixing operation also involves fibers, then you can see that uh, what happens is the polymer surrounding the fiber is going to melt, but the fiber itself may be glass or a natural fiber like uh, cellulose or jute, then that is not really going to melt. And so, uh, what that leads to is uh, basically breakage of fibers, because what you have and I uh, will draw this uh, picture in a magnified scale. So, if you have a pellet and uh, there is a fiber uh, uh, everywhere in the pellet and uh, so what happens is uh, part of the pellet has molten and uh, so I will have to draw the fibers in a different color so that we can see them. So, let us say this is a fiber and then there are fibers inside the pellet also. Now, the molten part can flow while the solid part the pellet uh, embeds the fiber. So, you can see that this fiber is going to experience a shear force because the molten fluid is going to move and flow while the solid pellet cannot move. Of course, the solid pellet can rotate itself, but the rate at which the solid pellet rotates and the rate at which this fluid is moving can be different and then therefore, there is a shearing action on the fiber and what will this lead to? The breakage of the fiber. So, whenever we are making uh, short fiber composites in the pellet, we may have a fiber which is let us say 5 mm or 3 mm long, but in the extrudate, the fiber size will be 2 mm or 1 mm and all of it depends on what happens at a single pellet level and how this melt zone is formed and how does it shear next to the pellet and so on. So, you can see that uh, from the uh, importance of analyzing the final product, what happens to each and every section, how are solids conveyed, how do solids start melting, how does the melt flow is very important. And then of course, the final uh, part is the, the die and die is necessarily much narrower than the whatever is the barrel and the screw opening there, because we force the material through a narrow die and do the shaping operation and finally, get the extruded. So, you can see that uh, based on this description, the two classic problems of fluid mechanics are uh, flow in a channel with wall moving. So, this is where uh, the screw is rotating and because of which polymer is also moving. So, this is like saying that I have a material between two plates and one plate is moving because of which the polymer is also moving. The other uh, problem is uh, that of a contraction, because we have basically polymer being pushed through a narrow opening, so that we get the extrudate. And one of the important aspects of extrusion uh, design is what is the shape of the extrudate and uh, what is the shape of the die. So, the die opening shape and the extruded shape, how are they related to each other and uh, that is an important part of uh, design. We will see later on that extruded shape is not exactly the same as the die opening because of as soon as the polymer comes out because of the elasticity macromolecule were forced to go through a very narrow opening. And so, contraction flow is very significantly influenced by the segmental mobility and the segmental flexibility that is there in the polymer. When we are forcing it to go through the narrow opening, the polymer molecules can get stretched. But as soon as it comes out, as soon as the extrudate is formed, again there is no opening there anymore and polymer segments can go back to their earlier conformation. And so, this elasticity will induce a shape in extrudate which is different compared to the opening. 
So, you can see that uh, an example process such as extrusion involves so many intricacies which are related to phase transfer because solidification to melting is involved. Then it involves flow and shaping and stretching and shear flow and extensional flow, flow through contraction, flow through a pipe, flow through a channel. So, so many different examples are involved and post extrusion now the shaping can be done, you can stretch it again and then finally cooling has to happen, solidification or crystallization or vitrification. And so, in this operation there are several parameters which are important based on the description that I gave we already know that you know screw dimensions will be very important. The diameter, uh, the compression ratio, this compression ratio is important because that is what will determine how the conveying of solids happen and how does the transition zone melting happens. Because basically with this narrow opening becoming narrower, the solids get pushed and then through viscous dissipation and the heating heaters which are there we can have melting of the polymeric pellets. And so, therefore, compression ratio is important. Uh, the length to diameter ratio of the screw is important because that determines the how these different zones are separated from each other. The angle that determines again how is the pumping action or the screw conveying action, action happening. And then the channel depth of course, determines the overall amount of material that is available higher the channel depth, it also implies that the strain rate will be lower. And uh, to explain this, you can just think of uh, this problem where let us say if I have a flat plate and uh, I pull the top plate uh, with a certain velocity, there will be a certain strain rate in this. Now, I take the same two plates, but now I have much narrower opening and I pull the top plate with the same velocity. So, this is equivalent to channel depth because we could think of this as the screw moving at a given velocity, but if the channel depth is less, then the strain rate will be higher because strain rate in all of these cases is the velocity of the screw divided by the channel depth. So, therefore, that determines uh, the amount of strain rate and we already know that strain rate influences the flow behavior of polymeric materials very significantly. And so, screw speed and channel depth together determine the strain rate in the material. Then finally, the die opening and the overall pressure drop because of pumping actions determine what is the overall behavior of the extrusion operation. And generally, uh, this can be uh, shown using what is called an extruder characteristic. So, we can look at flow rate because we are interested in how much amount of polymer we can process per unit time. So, that is determined based on flow rate. We would like to make parts as fast as possible and so therefore, flow rate should be as high as possible. However, there are limitations. We can apply higher and higher pressure and again achieve this uh, higher and higher flow rate. But when we go to extremely high pressure, then uh, and uh, uh, we, we will have degradation set in the material, chain scission and uh, reactions like that can degrade the polymer material. Now, in, in this uh, basically flow rate uh, versus pressure drop can be thought of uh, when we think in fluid mechanics, the standard problem we solve is pipe flow. And in a pipe flow, if there is laminar flow, then we know that flow rate is proportional to pressure drop. So, we will get a straight line. But here we have polymeric materials which are non-Newtonian as well as we do not have a straightforward pipe, but the we have similar to a pipe whose cross sectional area keeps on decreasing because remember there is a compression ratio. So, therefore, generally uh, pressure drop uh, increasing uh, will change the strain rate and therefore, change the flow rate non-linearly. And uh, this is the kind of uh, behavior that you will obtain for one particular die. When you change the die size, you will get a different flow rate versus pressure drop characteristic. Looking at this graph, can you make out which diameter of die is higher? Is die 2 diameter high or die 1 diameter high? To think of it, you can just uh, pose this question that at the same pressure drop, which one gives me higher flow rate and which one gives me lower flow rate and why? So, I am sure then you can quickly see that die 2 ought to have a bigger opening because I get much more flow rate from it. And similarly, the screw speed also determines 
how much is the uh, amount of uh, material that I get. And uh, at different pressure drops and screw speeds, we will again have different characteristics. So, uh, generally, uh, this kind of a characteristic is drawn to each and every uh, for uh, every set of uh, uh, extruder uh, system. And then uh, we can decide which die to use, which RPM to use, how much delta P to use, and what kind of production rate will we get using the analysis of such characteristic curves. Let us shift and now look at uh, the injection molding operations. Uh, injection molding is a cyclic process as opposed to the continuous process of extrusion where we saw that melting happens and then it gets extruded and keeps on getting uh, pulled and then therefore, it is a continuous operation. Injection molding on the other hand is a cyclic operation. How is it cyclic? What do we do is we start with uh, closing the mold. As soon as we close the mold, we imply that mold can be filled. So, therefore, then injection can be initiated. When we initiate the injection, mold filling happens. And then uh, once the mold is filled, we hold the material for some amount of time. And then uh, we can withdraw the injection unit and uh, simultaneously start cooling the sample. So, that uh, recovery and solidification happens. As soon as solidification happen, uh, mold can be opened and part can be ejected. So, this is uh, nothing but again uh, opening and so the next stage again will be to close the mold and so it is a cycle which can continue and uh, strength of injection molding is all of this can be done in couple of seconds. That is how fast the injection molding process is and the design of injection molding involves several calculations again in terms of pressure drop and flow rate and this uh, exam question highlights that if you have an injection molding unit uh, which uh, delivers a certain amount of polymer and the dimensions of the uh, the tube in which the delivery is happening is given and also pressure drop is given then can we have an estimate of what is the amount of stress that is generated by this polymer uh, because the mold uh, itself is not uh, moving so what will be the amount of pressure that is stress that is generated and then uh, whatever is the amount of power that is required for the screw to actually convey the material to the mold so you can think about this uh, while we discuss uh, the injection processing operation in little more detail so initial part of uh, the operation again looks like the extrusion where two a hopper uh, pellets are fed in this case though we already have a set of pellets which are mixed. So, the role in this case of the injection unit is to just make the polymer into a molten form so that it can be delivered to the mold. And uh, in uh, as soon as the mold is uh, closed, then uh, what we have is there is an uh, injection chamber in which fluid will accumulate. And then when the screw moves forward, the injection material can then flow and then fill the gap. So, you can see here that the mold is empty. This is the mold cavity, so to speak, in which the fluid has to come and flow. So, mold filling is happening here. And again, uh, to uh, melt the polymer, heaters will be there, and uh, the barrel, cylindrical barrel is there. And then there is again uh, a narrow opening through which the polymer will have to flow and then uh, flow into the mold. In this case, what is the complexity of shape in the mold itself is also very important. And for toys or various other things, the shape can be very complex. In certain section, the part can be very thin, in some other section, the part can be very thick. And so, all of this flow has to happen. And again, there is an operating window. And that operating window can be thought of in terms of pressure and temperature. If we change the temperature of molding, then uh, the viscosity will be lower flow behavior may be easy. And uh, similarly, by applying higher pressure, we may be able to quickly do the process. However, there are again limitations. If we have too high a temperature, then thermal degradation can take place. If we apply too much of uh, pressure, then uh, the mold can overflow. Remember that uh, there is always this mold closing and the two parts of the mold are coming and closing. If we apply too much of a pressure, then there will be narrow app openings in which the mold has closed, uh, material will start flowing. So, there will be what is called a flash, which implies polymer coming out of the mold which is closed, but it cannot be ensured that it is completely sealed or leak proof. 
On the other hand, if you apply uh, less temperature, then what happens is the polymer uh, segmental mobility and macromolecular motion is not very fast. And when uh, polymer comes in contact uh, with uh, another polymer melt, so this is let us say melt front and uh, this is also melt front. And when they come in combined com, uh, contact with each other, the macromolecular segment from this and macromolecular segment from this should intermingle for you to get a good weld line. In fact, no weld line will imply that there is perfect mixing. But at low temperature, what happens is macromolecular flexibility is less. And therefore, uh, we get a weld line which is quite prominent and that becomes basically the weak spot or sometimes the viscosity can be so high that the filling is incomplete. In uh, some places, uh, the polymer does not reach and uh, in that case, we will have incomplete filling. So, the filling process itself is not very efficient. So, again, uh, low temperature is not desirable. Uh, if we maintain too low a pressure, then again, there, once the part comes out, there will be significant amount of shrinkage because uh, maintaining pressure and allowing uh, stabilization of the overall uh, polymeric material is important. So, with uh, this, uh, we have seen uh, two important processing operations, extrusion and injection molding, and we have seen how flow is very important. And uh, therefore, analysis of these processing operations in terms of flow behavior involves some of these features. Uh, we, we look at uh, flow in an idealized sense. We look at a Kuwait flow which basically implies taking the material between a moving solid surface. So, this is Kuwait flow. We could also look at Poiseuille flow in which case we have a cylindrical pipe and then we impose a pressure gradient and to force the uh, polymer to flow through this. And uh, in this case, of course, we may get a velocity profile where it is maximum at the center and zero at the surfaces. So, these are two ideal types of flows and you can see both of these are important. When extruder uh, screw is moving, then we have a Kuwait flow. When we have the uh, pumping operation in which pump uh, is creating pressure, then we have Poiseuille flow. Because extrusion die when the material is coming out, pressure is very high in the extruder because we have all this screw action and uh, fluid is uh, basically being forced to move and therefore, pressure is extremely high. And the other side, it is atmospheric pressure because that is the extrudate where the polymer has come out. And so, we have a pressure gradient. And so, flow through the die opening, it can be analyzed using Poiseuille flow. And of course, we have uh, complex geometries. So, there is contraction and expansion because as soon as the material comes out in the mold, it is like expansion. But it is going through the extrusion die, then there is contraction. So, both contraction and expansion flows are involved flow around corners and objects are involved. We can have uh, an opening like this uh, contraction where fluid is flowing and uh, we can have these corner and uh, flow around corner may be very different. In fact, there may be a stagnation zone where polymer may start solidifying or degrading and once in a while that polymer joins the flow and therefore, it comes out that will compromise the performance of the part. So, all of these uh, complex geometry flows are very important. Uh, additionally, we have uh, solid to liquid phase transition. If there are some volatiles in case of foaming uh, operations, we will definitely have uh, blowing agents. So, there is phase change there also. Heating and cooling are important part in terms of melting as well as solidification. And uh, if let us say crystallization or polymerization are happening simultaneously, those bring in uh, heat uh, release whenever there is polymerization happening, heat absorption if there is melting happening. So, all of these involve basically transfer of heat. And then uh, we have mixing and uh, mixing of small molecules with macromolecules, mixing of one macromolecule with another macromolecule, mixing of the same macromolecule in a mold where weld lines can be formed. So, mass transfer is also extremely important. Uh, and uh, finally, of course, we can have reactions. So, if we have to analyze processing operations, these are all the features which need to be looked at very closely. And so, with this, uh, we will uh, close uh, this lecture which uh, talked about uh, extrusion and injection molding as the two most important operations. 
And uh, the question related to uh, the injection molding operation is basically uh, based on a force balance uh, where uh, the pressure acts at the uh, entry and exit and therefore it is related to the cross sectional area where the pressure is acting. And then the transfer of stress between the polymer uh, melt and the surrounding tube is based on the wall stress. And so, wall stress uh, can be calculated based on this and uh, then the power uh, per unit volume is nothing but stress into strain rate and strain rate uh, for uh, this kind of pipe flow is again given. So, therefore, based on this we can then calculate what is the power that is required. So, with this we will close the lecture. Thank you.